everybody, welcome to the Wall Doc Way. I'm Jessica, and today's video is going to be an Amazon haul. Now, it's not a huge Amazon haul, thankfully. It's just a few things that I have purchased over the last month to two months since the last time I did a haul with you guys, which was a huge back to school haul. This is just a few things that I have picked up along the way that have been kind of important in our homeschool or we needed and didn't have or Emily kind of wanted. And then a few things that Emily got for her birthday that have made an impact in our homeschool. So I wanted to make sure that I shared them in the haul. And the first of which I didn't know I was going to buy this for her at the time because I wasn't planning to buy it for her for back to school, but she ended up getting it for her birthday. And that is a Kindle Paperwhite. So you guys know that I love my Kindle Paperwhite. I wasn't planning to love it, but I absolutely did. And Emily was constantly um, kind of almost jealous. Like, oh, I was able to read multiple books on the go. Especially when we were gone to the beach, she finished her book and she had only taken two books with her. So when she finished them, she was done. But I was able to just get more books on my Kindle. And so she was like, man, I wish I had one so I could get multiple books. And I just gave in and got one for her because she wanted to read more books, you guys. So I'm not going to say no to that. And plus we live in Florida. So being in the pool or at the beach or in some sort of water situation is extremely common. And this is waterproof. So I don't have to worry about her getting drops of water on it. And it's really, really great for her in the car. She doesn't get car sick, luckily, so she can read on the go. It takes up less space. I can throw mine and hers in my purse if we're going like to an appointment or something. So for me, it was worth the investment. Now I did purchase a refurbished one for her and I did purchase the smaller storage size. So mine is a 32 gigabyte. Hers is an eight gigabyte. It hasn't been an issue yet. I probably didn't need the 32 gigabyte, but I wanted to save some money and I didn't want um, for it to be an issue if something happened to it. Like I didn't want to lose it. So luckily the refurbished was less than $100. So it wasn't a huge investment. I mean, I spent that in books, so it was definitely worth it to do that. And then when I purchased this one for her, I was able to call them and have them switch the Kindle Unlimited to the Kids Unlimited or Kids Plus or whatever it is they call it. It's like a 90 day trial. And so I was like, hey, it's for a kid. And so they swapped out the Kindle Unlimited that came with it for the kids version. And so we're trying that out for 90 days. So I will let you know if I think it's worth it. So far it has been because she's read like 12 books that have all been included on that. And so I haven't had to pay for them. So it's been kind of nice. But I can also use library books on it just like I do for myself. So there is that. The other thing that she got for her birthday was a kid's Fitbit. This was not something that was on her list. She had cousins come visit her at the beach and they had them and she fell in love with it. She thought being able to count her steps and things like that were just really, really fun. And I thought, I mean, it's a watch. It really wasn't that expensive. And the fact that it helped count her steps, it keeps your sleep schedule for you. It would tell her if she slept enough hours. There was just a lot of benefits to it. And I thought, huh, it's got a timer on it. It's got a alarms on it. So I got one for her and then it wasn't three days after she had hers that she was bragging to me and Kevin about how many steps she had. And we made the joke that it was a good thing. We didn't have one because if we did, we would be doubling her in steps. So I started looking surprisingly, the adult fit fits were much more expensive than the kids, but I was able to find the galaxy fit, which we both have Samsung galaxy phones, So it just made sense for a very reasonable price if we got the model before last. And so me and him both got one of those. So it tells us our steps, it tells us our stress levels, the weather. One of my favorite things about it though, is that you can receive notifications on it. You cannot text, well you can quick text. So you can have like five pre-programmed things that you can reply, but you can't text back on it. So what I love is that during the homeschool day, because I tend to really get distracted if my phone is in my hand. So during the homeschool day, I can leave my phone. I can put my galaxy fit on. I can get any text messages or phone calls and see, oh, it's important or it's not and not have that feeling of, oh, I'm going to miss something, you know, that's important or that's somebody that needs me. And I'm not lost on my phone during our school day. And then I take most of our 
pictures of like things we're doing with my big camera anyway. I don't tend to use my phone for that. So it's been a huge time management tool for us for multiple things. So she times herself on her watch all the time. She's constantly um, doing countdowns and how long can I do this or how long can I read or you know how long will it take me to do this. And then we're doing the math because we're constantly, oh, I have X amount of steps more than you or, you know, 3,000 more until I hit my goal. And they've just, it's just been a really fun family thing, a little bit competitive, but I've seen a lot of sneaky learning coming out of it. Plus we're all getting extra steps in because we're like pushing to get more and more in. So that's always a plus too. So we'll call that PE. Okay, I'm gonna start with games because I have less of those. So the first game that I have, I actually, let's see, it's in a box, I don't know the actual name of it. Here we go. It's Catch the Golden Snitch, which it is a Harry Potter game. It is super fast paced, but it is so much fun. Like so much fun. So it comes in a box that looks a whole lot like the Quidditch trunk. And then inside the box, you have your bludgers and your quaffle and the snitch is back there on the back. I don't know if you can see it. I don't want to dump everything out. You have your snitch and you have cards and you're like racing to lay down the most cards and you're throwing balls at each other and the snitch pops up all of a sudden and whoever catches it gets a certain amount of points. And it is a very fast paced game. The first couple times when we played it, we were like, wait, what? But it is a lot of fun. Um, it's probably been my favorite recent like new game purchase because it's totally different gameplay than anything that we normally would play, but it's a lot of fun. Now the others I have not played yet, so I can't tell you a ton about. This is Quick Pucks. I actually saw this on Tori's Instagram from Oglesby Ohana, and it is something that we absolutely love. It's a logic game. So you see and you're racing to try to match them and then whoever rings the bell first gets to keep that card and kind of be the winner and me and emily love games where we're like competing head to head so that seemed like a really great way to do some competing logic and i like games that force her um to kind of stretch her visuals because she has eye muscle issues that's why spot it is such a huge game for us anything that stretches her visually and that will do that it'll stretch her visually and make her really think at the same time so it's like a win-win and then the other game that i like never added a game to my cart quicker in my life was the halloween version of taco cat goat cheese pizza emily is obsessed with this game like obsessed with it she will pick it every single time and it's kind of funny because kevin is not easy he will slap you and make it hurt not intentionally he's just that strong so she'll be like wait a minute is daddy playing and she has to really decide if she wants to play or not but it is one of her recent favorites we have the original taco got goat taco cat goat cheese pizza we bought the christmas version last year and now the halloween version now they just need like a valentine's and an easter and i would buy all those too because it really is a fun game and it's a speed game and again it helps her with those visuals because you have to be fast at it so i like those the other things that i purchased were to go along with our space and moon unit studies we got a solar system planetarium this is something that kevin and emily will do together probably on one of their steam days and then we have the earth moon model making kit and I just really mostly liked that with these two, you were making the models, but that the things actually moved the correct way. So she'll actually see, you know, how the moon orbits around the earth. So just kind of fun hands on things to go with our unit studies. All right, next up, we're almost to the books, you guys. I picked up the history timeline notebook from School Nest. Megan has a ton of these. They're absolutely fantastic quality. I wanted the history one because I thought it would be a fun way for Emily to start to see where things hit or fit into the full timeline of things and kind of like how it all goes together. And so we are going to use this for a couple of different things. We're going to start putting our who was units in here when we're done with them. And then each time we finish a unit study, I'm going to have her pick probably five to 10 
like significant things that happen. So like during our space unit study, for instance, like, you know, a man walked on the moon or the first woman in space or whatever. I'm not going to guide her. I'm going to let her pick whatever five to 10 things stood out the most to her. And we're going to add them to this so that at the end of years of homeschooling, she'll have this completed history timeline that will be kind of everything that we learned together. But that way she can reference it and see where it fits in. And it's super nice because in the very front, it has my history. So you can kind of do like your own timeline or your child's own timeline. And there's no years on that. So it could be whatever. And then it goes into prehistory, ancient history. And then there's years and little tabs at the top. And then you have, you know, your medieval history or Middle Ages, sorry. So Middle Ages, early, modern, and then modern times. And it goes all the way through 2099. So I just really like that it was done for me. I mean, yes, I could have probably made something, but I love Megan. I wanted to support her and she did all of the hard work and it's beautiful and you can get them in any color you want. Of course, Emily picked pink. All right, on to the books. I only picked one book out that I have added. I've been reading most of my books on my Kindle, but there are certain ones that I just like to have to add to my library, and this was one I wanted to add, and it is The 4-Hour School Day by Dorinda Wilson. She is the author of Unhurried Homeschool, and I love that book. It's one of the first ones I read, so when I saw that she had a new book out, I wanted to add it to my library and it's how you and your kids can thrive in homeschool life. So that is the book that I purchased for myself. And then Emily has a whole bunch of books here, you guys. So we were doing space obviously, and I wanted to find her a book that she could read kind of for fun that's still tied into our unit study. And she's been really, really in love with those you choose stories where you get to choose your own path. So I found these You Choose Stories, and the series is called A Field Trip Mystery is the series. And this one was The Outlaw from Outer Space. So I grabbed it so that she could read it during our space unit study. She read through it in like three days, like every possible outcome. She kept going back and changing and reading through it, and she loved it. She immediately was like, Mom, look, there's other books in the back of here. And she was like showing me the last page. Mom, look, look, look. So I went ahead and got her, I believe all of the ones that they have for the field trip mystery. So we have the missing bully, the carnival caper, the disappearing fruit, and the library shelves. And if you are not familiar with the you choose, I'm just gonna kind of show you. It starts off and it, like you get through almost what would be like a chapter and then at the end of that chapter, instead of you going to the next page, for instance, here it says to investigate who has the elves and spells book, turn to page 20. To try to find out what's scratching the vents, turn to page 50. To try to solve the nonsense notes, turn to page 81. And so that's what you're doing is you're going through turning to different pages based off of what your decisions are. And then you can go back and make different decisions. So most of them have like three totally different paths and 12 different endings, 12 to 13 different endings, at least in that series. And then I fell down this huge you choose like rabbit hole. And I found a couple different ones that were nonfiction that I knew she would love. So I got her the You Choose, Can You Protect the Coral Reefs? So it too has 25 choices and 14 different endings. Can You Save an Endangered Species? So that one has 33 choices and 18 endings. Can You Save a Tropical Rainforest? With 37 choices and 20 different endings. And then these Could You Survive ones looked really fun. So I got her the Could You Survive the Jurassic Period, which again is a you choose, so it has all the different choices and endings. Could You Survive the Cretaceous Period? Could You Survive the New Stone Age? And then Could You Survive the Ice Age? And seriously, you guys, there were so many of these different could you survive and you choose. There was like 
ones based off of world wars and civil wars and there was ones based off of just I mean all kinds of stuff and the story ones if you have a kid who likes Scooby-Doo the you choose stories there was like 20 different Scooby-Doo ones so if you are looking for a way to get your kid to read some more and they like making those kinds of choices look up the you choose stories or the you choose because there are so many different ones and the you choose stories are in color like they have color pictures in them not a ton but they are in color which makes emily super super happy so i highly suggest them i wish i had found them even earlier okay moving on dragon masters we went ahead and bought book 19 and i pre-ordered book 20. i feel like i pre-ordered book 21 too but now I can't remember. I looked at it. If it was available for pre-order, I pre-ordered it. And I also pre-ordered the new Zoe and Sassafras title. It doesn't even have a date out yet, but I did go ahead and pre-order. I know at least one Dragon Master and one Zoe and Sassafras because we love those. And then speaking of dragons, I found this really, really awesome DK Dragon World book that I knew we had to have. It's called Dragon World Meet the Fiery breathing beast of mythology and it is gorgeous inside and it's split up by the world of dragons so you have asian dragons european dragons dragons of the world and dragon discoveries and like i said it is absolutely beautiful And I went ahead and also found this illustrated maps of the Americas. It's the national parks. We are hopefully, fingers crossed, planning a national park trip. We try to do one every fall. And I think if everything works out, we are going to one this year. I don't want to say it and jinx it, but I'll let you guys know. So I was looking for some things for that specific park and I stumbled upon this one. Now this has all 62 American national parks and i just liked that it was like the map of the park so it's a little bit i mean it has a few facts about it it tells you a little bit about it not a ton but it is actually the map of the park so i thought that was just kind of cool it was a different kind of take on it i mean we have a ton of the national parks books but i just liked that you know what you were seeing was actually the layout or the map of the park so it was just something different and it is very pretty I also got the Water Cycles book. Um, I actually had pre-ordered this, so it came in whenever it was released. We have Life Cycles, which is the first book in this series, and we love it. It's beautiful. It's like little snippets of information. It's perfect, but I was thrilled to see hurricanes in this one. I know that seems kind of silly, but as Floridians, um, it's something we deal with a lot. So when I saw that, I was thrilled and you have ocean waves i mean it's just all of the different stuff it's the source of life from start to finish and just tons of different and you have the periwinkles and it's all these little snippets of information about it and it's not just i mean here's a manatee so it's kind of everything water it's not just specifically there's an orca um, elephant seal so it's not just the water you have water on earth using water life and water and then waters and water and humans so it even has like the hydropower the life cycle and the water cycle books by far probably some of our most used books we just love getting them out and reading them this is one i got for emily and um, we haven't even tried it yet i don't want to mess it up but it is a shine the light book which we have from us born in love but this is magical creatures and mythical beast it may end up being a little kitty i don't think it's going to be though but it's beautiful so it has like different adventures that you're going through and they're kind of based on so you start with the adventure beginning in oxford england and then you move on to the legendary lake serpent the loch ness in scotland then the footsteps of the giant, which is the giant causeway in Northern Ireland. And as you're moving along throughout the book and all of these different magical, amazing places, there's all of these like 
I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, but there's all of these like things that you can find when you shine the light through different places. So it says, can you see the lake sh serpent? Shine your magic flashlight. So once you shine it, you would be able to see the Loch Ness Monster in here. And it's just really fun. It's got a little bit, not a ton, but it does have a little bit kind of background information. Like I said, maybe more for younger kids, but I just thought it would be a fun way to get her exposed to even more of the magical creatures and mythical beasts because she tends to always want to gravitate towards unicorns and dragons and hippogriffs and that kind of thing. And I thought this would be a really fun way to get in even more, especially while we were doing a little bit of Waddocks, Wizards, and Wands. Even though we're not doing magical creatures per se, we're doing astronomy, I still thought it would be fun. So that is it. That is my most recent Amazon haul. This is a thing, few things we've accumulated over the past few months. I would love it if you would tell me down in the comments some of the things you have been buying from Amazon lately because maybe I need to add them to my cart.